Well, hello, fellow YouTubers. Thank you for joining me for this so exciting. We're going to talk about the pub rock bands that you probably didn't know existed, but who were very good and who could have made it. Who knows? Jesus is a friend of mine. And I'm going to concentrate on the later period of the pub rock era from say 1979 to 1990 as I talked about on my last video and you can see that I'll put a link up there if you want to watch that you don't have to watch that first you can watch this one first and the first band I'm going to talk about are the Prisoners who were one of our biggest draws when we were at the Pricketers in South East London probably because that was the nearest point to Medway where the band came from <laughs> loud they were very exciting they featured the guy who was going to be the leader of the James Taylor Quartet can you guess his name oddly enough he was called Jamie I believe in those days and there was Graham Day and Alan Crockford and I can't remember the name of the drummer I'm afraid but he was a great guy too and it was a very good band a very exciting band and because they played there um, normally at the weekends on a Friday I would say it's probably 50% people from Medway because these cricketers were seen as not too far into London for people from Kent because it was south of the river and they took a long time to get bigger in North London and that led to a lot of bands from Medway playing there. I can remember we had the Mighty Caesars, the Milkshakes, a lot of stuff with Billy Childish and various people and Reckless Eric moved down there when he was called Eric Goulden and he formed a band called the Len Bright Combo who featured members from all these bands and it was all very incestuous. So that's the Prisoners and who's next? Well, it's got to be Rent Party. <laughs> Red Party were from Southend, their lead singer was a guy called Jackson Sloan and they were a 1940s style American jazz swing band and um, well I first saw them at the 100 Club in Oxford Street and they used to do Saturday nights there when Roger the owner Mr Jazz was in charge and they used to pack the place out on a Saturday night. We had them on at the Cricketers and they used to do, dare I say, upmarket venues, the more eclectic venues because there are lots of places that just did punk or just did indie stuff and they wouldn't have actually fitted in particularly well. And even though I was more into punk and that kind of thing at the time, I really enjoyed Rent Party. So I'm really going through these, aren't I? I'm really speeding through. There's quite a few left, so bear with me. And I'd like to say, while I'm rabbiting on and stuff, if you like it, please like. If you don't like it, then just don't. And if you are not already subscribed, then please subscribe and comment. Let me know what you think. Do you remember these bands? Do you like the sound of them? Even if you weren't around, perhaps you can still say, I think you're talking a load of, oh, blah, 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 blah. If you think I am, or nice one, Jim, or something like that. Let's do somebody you would have heard of, which is Gino Washington and the Ram Jam Band. <laughs> Gino made his name with the Ram Jam Band in the 1960s and they played everywhere, mainly clubs to be fair, and they were one of the biggest live acts on the circuit. And then sometime in the very early 70s, Gino left the country and went back to the States because he's an American. He was an American airman, basically, in um, East Anglia and he used to come down at the weekends to London to watch the bands during the early 1960s. And in the end, he formed a band and he was the lead singer. And to be honest with you, I was again I was Gino's manager a bit later on when he came back he's still around now he's he's 80 years old he's coming up to 81 and he's still performing but not quite as energetically as he used to I'll be honest but he still gives it a pretty good go I mean more than I'd want to do and I'm quite a long way off 81 you keep on moving you said what I say yo 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 it <laughs> Basically, he went off the States, came back when Gino by Dex's Midnight Runners became a hit. Oh, Gino. Even though it, it's like a bit of a backhanded compliment to Gino, because it's basically saying that he sold out, basically. Anyway, that doesn't matter, because people don't listen to words of songs, do they? So he came back with a heavy metal trio, and I booked them for the Green Man Stratford. Well, we got talking, we became friendly. There's a band in Putney where I was based, 
who were called the Soul Band. The horn section led the band, and they were like ex-members of the Ram Jam Band, which is the 1960s band, and they persuaded Gino to do some dates with them. Somehow I got involved in that, and they asked me to get them a few dates, because I was an agent at the time. So again, I reunited with Gino, and he and I and his wife Frenchie got together, and he basically told me he planned to have his own band. He was only temporarily doing it with the Soul Band, and that I should help him and we should unite and basically make him as big as he was back in the 1960s, which we attempted to do. And it's a whole story which I won't go into here. It's like a really long evolved story involving some hair raising things that happened at the Cricketers, which is a bit later. This was during the 1970s was all this and the early part of the 80s. And when I was at the Cricketers, it was mid to late 80s and Gino was one of our, well, one of the circuit's top drawers. By this time, he had his own band named the Ram Jam Band, because for a long time, there were no members of the original Ram Jam Band in it, because the Ram Jam Band in 1960 was, was not even run by Gino, it was, it was run by the, the, the bass player who was married, I think, to Elkie Brook. Pete Gage, I think his name was. Anyway, he owned the name, so Gino was very reticent about calling it the Ram Jam Band, but everybody knew that if he called it that, it would get more people in. And eventually, I th I'm not sure whether he saw Pete Gage or something, or spoke to him on the phone, but eventually he started calling it the, the, the Ram Jam Band. The same sort of set. You know, his inclination was to do with heavy rock. They knew what the people wanted was 60s soul, basically, and that's what he did. And he was very good, very successful. Gina Washington and the Ram Jam Band were one of the top drawers on the pub rock circuit for years. I mean, they still go out now and pack places out. So there you go, that's Gina Washington and the Ram Jam Band. And who's the final one we're going to talk about this time? We're going to do more next time. So if we not mention a band that you particularly like, the chances are we'll mention it next time because I've got a whole list of bands to talk about. Jesus is a friend of mine, a friend of Jesus. And the next band we're going to talk about. What's called always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Is Jegsy Dodd and the sons of Harry Cross. All right. What's in your boot? In my boot? Yeah. It's not mine, it's Barry's. So you don't know what's in it? Yeah. What then? A dog. How many? Just one. Now, people who don't know Jegsy Dodd, who's a poet from just outside Liverpool, I think it's the Wirral. Well, basically, he's a poet who basically got onto John Peel who persuaded him to get a band who said it would be really good to do it with a band. I think John Cooper Clark was doing the same sort of thing with a band. Same sort of thing, I mean, it's the same idea, which is poetry and a band. Jegsy had a whole sense of humour, and he was very political. Blow kisses to the soldiers, girls. The argies must be fools, because rule Britannia rules the waves, and it also waves the rules. Well, the task force hits at sail that day, full of those who dare. And Jimmy's heading for a land that he didn't know was there. Be loyal to your country, boys. Salute the Empire's flag. While your wife packs all her troubles in her Marks and Spencer's bag. I think I saw them at Gables. They were supporting Half Man, Half Biscuit. I think it was their first London show, and I happened to be there for some reason. I was really impressed. Anyway, we booked them a few times at the Cricketers. They were fantastic. He was a very f funny man. Obviously, the Sons of Harry Cross is a reference to Brookside, because there was a, a semi-comic character in it, Brookside, a belligerent older man. Yeah. Who are you like? New neighbour. What do you do? Nothing. I'm retired. What were you? I wasn't a gopper. No? Well, it's all the same to me if you were. I'm sure. Jagsy Dodds and the sons of Harry Cross made you smile. And when you turned up, the music made you tap your feet and you smiled. So if you enjoyed this, please, I say like, comment, let me know what you think. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.